Wonder Woman 1984 is good, but it can be better. I have a feeling I'll make more than one video about Wonder Woman 1984. It just, it needs a lot of work. There are plenty of good things. Maxwell Lord screaming, granted, this mall scene, Chris Pine, Chris Pine in around, love it. But there were a lot of other parts of the movie that I did not love. You want to hear me talk about them at length? Listen to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking. We did an entire episode about Wonder Woman 1984. Five-star runtime, five-star podcast. But now, I want to get at one thing that really bugged me. Maybe more than it should have. But hey, this is Film YouTube. Nitpicking is our speciality. And that thing is the Golden Eagle armor. So in case you haven't seen the movie, spoilers, an hour and 40 minutes into Wonder Woman 1984, when there's only a cool 50 minutes left, jeez. Anyway, Steve asks Diana what this big thing she just has under sort of a tarp in her office is, and Diana explains that she is in possession of the armor of one of Themyscira's greatest warriors, Asteria. See, Asteria used this armor to hold back all the armies of man while the Amazons escaped to Themyscira. So I guess she wasn't a warrior of Themyscira, but you know what I mean. It's very good armor, like the best armor ever. And then a little later, for no real reason besides, like, it, I guess it'd be helpful, Diana puts on the armor and uses it to fight a bunch of army guys that she could 100% beat without it. And then Cheetah shows up, a human Cheetah, mind you, and this human cheetah rips the most powerful armor in the world to shreds. Then Diana gets rid of the wings and the fight continues. The armor doesn't really show up again. We do get a look at Asteria later on, but it doesn't really make any story difference. It's just kind of a cute little thing. So the Golden Eagle armor serves barely any purpose. It does not grant Diana any new abilities, and it does not carry any particularly heavy symbolic weight. It is absolutely just there to sell toys and shirts and posters and a billion other things. And the ending of Wonder Woman 1984 has quite a few issues. Structural ones, little ones, big gray ones. But I wondered as the movie ended, could a more interesting version of this armor have addressed any of those issues? And if so, how? So if I could make one small change to Wonder Woman 1984, it would be this. The Golden Eagle armor should be bad. So real quick, let's talk about the armor in the comics. What purpose does it serve? Well, like many things, it's evolved over time. More recently, it's kind of been Diana's stuff's about to get real armor. Like how, and I'm shocked I don't have a better example for this, but like how in the finale of X-Men Evolution, spoiler alert for a cartoon that is absolutely worth your time, and on Disney+, Plus, I think, when Jean goes to Egypt to fight the horseman version of Professor X, Jean brings Cerebro because it will amplify her own powers. It's kind of a weapon you only break out for the big fights. However, the Golden Eagle armor was created with a very specific and different thematic purpose in mind. It first appeared in Mark Waid and Alex Ross's, dare I say, masterpiece, Kingdom Come. In this four-issue story from 1996, a man needs to witness what is shaping up to be the end of the world, and most of the heroes have lost their way. Superman is retired, Batman allies with Luthor, kind of, and Wonder Woman gets, let's say, rough around the edges. She's so violent that she is kicked out of Themyscira, and the moment where Wonder Woman really goes off the deep end is when she's getting ready for a big battle at a metahuman prison, and Diana puts on the Golden Eagle armor, goes from a protector to a warrior, and when she realizes the error of her ways, Diana takes the armor off, back to good old Wonder Woman. The Golden Eagle armor symbolizes brutality, the violence and cruelty that always separated the Amazons from the rest of man's world, the reason they left. It's a bad thing. So it was strange to me that in Wonder Woman 1984, Diana dons the Golden Eagle armor and it's fine. It symbolizes basically nothing. There is no purpose beyond selling toys, t-shirts, and things like that. And yeah, is it the worst thing in the world if a thing in a movie just looks cool? or exists to sell merchandise? No, of course not. But it can be more. In other words, the Golden Eagle armor is good, but it can be better. 
So I want to envision a version of Wonder Woman 84 where the Golden Eagle armor serves not only a narrative, but thematic purpose. So first off, let's change the backstory a little bit. Instead of being a super shield, let's make the Golden Eagle armor the most powerful weapon the Amazons ever created. Which is kind of what the God Killer was, but whatever, this is pre-God Killer. The Golden Eagle armor was created for Asteria, like in the movie, but not so she could just huddle into an indestructible turtle shell, but so she could actually fight against the armies of man. And it was fueled by rage, kind of like how Ares sometimes works in the comics. Also not to nitpick, not unlike my podcast mostly nitpicking, but in Greek mythology, Zeus actually attacked Asteria as an eagle, and she transformed into a quail. So if we're getting really technical, if this armor was made for Asteria, it's weird that it's an eagle. It should be the golden quail armor, but whatever. So let's make the armor kind of bad. Like, not evil necessarily, but a weapon of a bygone era. One where the Amazons were forced to fight a little dirty, lose control, like the Hulk, a last resort. But the Golden Eagle armor is strong. So Diana manages to find the armor and puts it in the Smithsonian. No one knows that it's a super weapon, so it isn't in danger. Plus, it's a cool part of her culture that Diana wants to share with the world. Not Amazon culture specifically, but just like Greek. So at the end of the second act, Diana loses her powers because of the monkey's paw slash Faustian bargain to bring Steve back from the dead by sacrificing what is most valuable to her. But Diana is not ready to give Steve up. After all, she just got him back. Oh, and also let's just have Steve be in his own body. It's super weird the way Wonder Woman 1984 deals with this, especially since, and not to nitpick again, not unlike my podcast, mostly nitpicking, The movie kind of forgets about the Steve body swap thing every so often. Like at one point, Diana tells Steve that they can't take a regular flight to Egypt because he doesn't have a passport. As if he does not have a passport because he is Steve Trevor, formerly dead pilot, and not just some engineer. Like maybe that guy doesn't have a passport either, but she doesn't know that. So it's weird. Anyway, yeah, Steve is just in his own body. So we're moving into the third act. Maxwell Lord is getting ready to use the TV broadcast system to touch everyone, and Diana decides to stop him. But she's weak. And I've seen this idea thrown around before, including in my Patreon exclusive book club, but have the lasso stop working too. It's truth powered, she's cheating death, so she's lost that part of her ability specifically. But Diana needs to stop Lord. And as far as she knows, she's going to meet significant resistance from the army which Lord is in control of. And Steve explains to Diana that Diana needs to let Steve go, so Diana gets her powers back, but Diana refuses. She needs to find another way. And then Diana remembers the Golden Eagle armor. She can wear it, and the armor will give Diana the extra strength needed to stop Lord. But this also comes with a catch. The armor is fueled by rage. But Diana is powered by love. She's an inspiration. So Diana will kind of be betraying her virtues to win this fight and keep Steve alive. But that's a sacrifice Diana is willing to make. And an added bonus, the Golden Eagle armor has wings that give Diana the ability to fly, which she has not learned yet. So Diana can quickly get to Lord, who at this point is at some base in DC, maybe the Pentagon or Reagan Airport, and he's leaving on a helicopter for the island. Steve pleads with Diana, but she won't listen. Diana wants to have it both ways. Save the day and keep Steve. So Diana steals the golden armor from the Smithsonian and suits up, and she feels it. Power, she's back, and she gets a little angry. And while Diana and Steve are arguing about the decision, we can notice that someone is following Diana. Something is following Diana, but it's unclear who, or I guess, what. So Diana puts the armor on, gets ready to leave, but she is attacked by her pursuer, who we learn is Barbara, now as a human cheetah. Let's say she didn't team up with Lord necessarily. She's just been following Diana for a while, and the transformation has turned her into a jellical supervillain. And Diana and Cheetah have a big fight. Diana gets angry at Barbara for keeping her from stopping Lord, but Barbara likes her new power and doesn't want to give it up. And hey, instead of this fight taking place in a dark, boring nothing, let's set it somewhere interesting. If you want to go full camp, uh, best place to put it would be at the Smithsonian Zoo. 
have Diana and the cheetah fight in some fake jungly settings. Have them fight in some dark areas where Cheetah's night vision gives her an advantage. Show that Cheetah is clever and during the fight figuring out different ways to get an advantage on Diana. But Diana wins because the armor is so powerful and she starts going berserk. The armor is influencing her. Diana knocks down Cheetah, but as Diana's about to kill her, Steve jumps in between the two of them. Diana stops, notices what she's becoming breaks down a bit, and Steve convinces Diana that she needs to let him go. Diana agrees, says goodbye to Steve, renounces her wish, and then gets her powers back. She shreds the eagle armor, apologizes to Cheetah, bonks her on the head so she can't follow her, and flies to Lord, something she was planning on using the armor for, but now needs to learn how to do herself. And that's it. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts about Wonder Woman 1984 in the future, but for now, suffice it to say, I wish the Golden Eagle armor was more of a complicated symbol and less of CGI marketing. As always, humongous thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are the best. If you want to see your name up here, get access to videos early, other cool stuff, like there's the Patreon-exclusive book club where we talked about Grant Morrison's Earth One Wonder Woman books, and that was a really good conversation leading up to Wonder Woman 1984. And during the book club, we talked about Wonder Woman Earth One, and then we talked about the movies. It was a fun discussion. It was just, you know, a more small kind of thing. It's a it's a great vibe if you're into that sort of thing. Patreon.com slash Movies. Chuck in a buck. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. Also, listen to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking. Every week, me and my friends DJ and Diggins pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. We talked at length this week about Wonder Woman 1984. So if you want to hear our thoughts on that and all the other big releases in the last couple of years, there are episodes about all of them. So we are Nitpicking Pod on Twitter, and you find us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Buy my Nando V Movies merchandise from the Nando V Movies merch store, which is linked in the description. I've got a very cool enamel pin, very cool pint glasses, stickers, and another thing that's going to be coming soon. Finally, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, all that stuff, wherever. Pretty much there is a platform like Letterboxd. I just kind of started doing Letterboxd again. I am Nando V Movies on all of those platforms. That's all I got. Stay safe, and I will see you next time.